old sourdough lodge and then the old sourdough outfitters is here, which is all has to do with the metals lodge. One, two, three. Almost 1 a.m. This is my third week in Alaska visiting my buddy Chris Palmer from the online ground school Angle of Attack. We've spent the last couple of weeks filming nothing but amazing flights and day trips. If you haven't seen parts 1 through 10 of this Alaska series, definitely check it out. Link is down in the description. My time in Alaska is starting to wind down, but there's one more place Chris and I want to go before I board the plane back to Texas. Bettles is a remote village about 35 miles north of the Arctic Circle, and that means around the time of the summer solstice, the sun doesn't set, and I can't leave Alaska without experiencing this. We are at 12.05 a.m. And there's the sun right back there. It's just incredible. Chris also has a good friend that's an aircraft mechanic in Bettles, and he can show us around this super remote village. In part 10, Chris and I left Talkeet in the northbound for Bettles, but we needed a lunch stop, so we landed at Summit Airport for a bite to eat. In this part, we make our way to our final destination with a fuel stop in Nanana, Alaska, but when two pilots see an abandoned airplane, we must go explore. Welcome to part 11. All right, we have landed in Nanana, Alaska. Very, very quiet airport, but nice long paved runway, and then it's got a 2,500 foot grass runway and then a water runway next to that. <clears throat> so we're gonna get some gas here, and there's actually an abandoned airplane over there. It looked like a DC-3. Uh, it's all beat up, it's in the shrubs, it's overgrown, stuff's grown around it, but we can't leave here without going to look at it. This looks like an old fuel pump. It does. And it's... <laughs> Well, clearly something bad happened. Nose gear collapse, maybe. But it looks like it smashed up there, you know? Yeah. It almost looks like this might have been used for rescue. Like they... They cut it, look, like Jaws of Life right here. Yeah. And then peeled it up. Yeah, the elevator and trim cables. Just watch your step. Control columns, rudder pedals. 
all the yolks and everything are gone. Everything, every little knob. A couple mixture knobs up here, but crazy. been completely gutted. Wonder what happened to it. I'll have to look up the tail number and find out. Yeah, we'll have to find the find the registration number somewhere and and check it out, see what see what happened to it. But yeah, everything's gone. Actually the seat rails are still here. <laughs> like they, they sawed off the seats. Yeah. The seats were right here. The rails are still there. It's crazy. Navigator, radio operator station. All these, all these giant BNC connections. Yeah. fuel pump switches they're like rusted shut prop anti-ice okay there's the tail number number 82 fox alpha ah oh, look at that there's a, there's a wing right here. Here's part of the gear. So this wing's upside down, it looks like. And then the engine nacelle's right there. And then I think that's the other wing over there and the engine nacelle. So since they force landed it, it's not like the gear were extended. It just forced them up into the fuselage even more right. once they slammed down. The Douglas C-54 departed Fairbanks carrying 3,000 gallons of heating fuel for Nixon Fork Mine. En route, the number two engine started running rough. The pilot elected to shut it down and return to Fairbanks. During the shutdown procedure, the engine caught fire. The fire extinguishing system was activated. The crew attempted to divert to Nanana Municipal Airport, but a forced gear up landing had to be carried out in the tundra. The left wing was consumed by fire. Uh, two, got, two people on board, no fatalities. Uh, probable cause caused the failure of an engine cylinder during cruise flight, which resulted in an in-flight fire and subsequent emergency gear up landing on snow-covered tundra. A factor in the accident was the failure of the fire suppression equipment to extinguish the fire. Really, really incredible. It looks like a, it was a more or less violent uh, impact just from all the damage. The airplane's behind me here, and then kind of just in the bushes over here is all the wreckage, I guess they they just kind of piled it up over here, but really cool. Had no idea this was here. I just saw it as we were landing and as we were taxiing and I was like, we're not leaving until we go check that out, Chris. <laughs> it's actually better than I thought it would be. No, it's, yeah, it's cool. It's just kind of an abandoned fuselage, but. No, it's a wrecked fuselage. I looked down at my leg and there were five mosquitoes on me because I'm in my Steve Irwin shorts. So we're gonna go back to the airplane, get out of these bushes and uh, start heading. There's a mosquito on my arm. We're gonna start heading up to Bettles. After we departed Ninana, we went about an hour and a half without seeing a single trace of humans on the ground. It was absolutely untouched wilderness. We do have some survival equipment on board the aircraft, but perhaps the most important pieces of gear are our GPS trackers and communicators. Chris is using a Track Plus and I'm using a Garmin InReach. Before we took off, I selected a handful of people from my contacts and my InReach sent them an email with a link to an online map. At any given time, there were five people that knew our location and where we are going, and I can send and receive text messages through satellite as well. If anything were to happen, I could push the SOS button and search and rescue would see our GPS distress signal and come find us. To me, this is a priceless tool to fly with. Pretty remote. 
dude, yeah. We haven't seen anything out here for a long, long time. I know. There's absolutely nothing out here. Yeah, it's crazy. I haven't seen a road. Not a cabin, not a road, not another, another hour. Not another person, yeah. Battles traffic, Scott 2423, uniform turning on. Final runway to full stop, Battles. Laps 30. Laps 40. Flaps up. So, where are you from again, Josh? Austin, Texas. Texas? Yeah. I've been there six months, two days. Oh, very cool. One of two vehicles that did start, and as of today, it did. Now we're good. Rob lives here in Bettles, and he's going to take us over to the cabin we'll be staying at so we can load our stuff in and get settled. Then him and his wife are going to drive us around and give us the grand tour of the village. So this is the main office. You guys can come here in the morning or at night. If you go in this door the, where the freezers are, that door is unlocked 24-7. Inside is a full convenience store. Oh my gosh. There's, uh, bre my hero. there's breakfast sausage, there's eggs, cheese, sour cream, canned stuff, ice cream. Uh... <laughs> like <laughs> Philly cheese steak, microwavable, whatever. And if you buy anything, just put your name and what you bought on a piece of paper on the desk and then you'll get caught up in the morning. Uh, it's just a pay as you go sort of thing. That's awesome. Which is dangerous because I got a fuel bill there. It's right. a mile long. I have no idea how much that's gonna cost me. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Oh, yeah. Orion, check, check that place out. Oh man. This is spotless. I love this. <laughs> this is amazing. Take a look, take a peek. Okay. All right. Old chicken. Chicken legs and thighs, pork ribs, tater tots. Whole grocery store in here. Bettles grocery store. <laughs> Burritos, look at that. Philly cheesesteak, DiGiorno pizzas. I assume all that stuff gets flown in. Yep, yep, all gets flown in. Mostly we've got a passenger van with an enclosed like 12 foot trailer. Okay. Somebody drives it seven hours up the Dalton Highway to Pump Station 5. And then we fly 20 minutes over to Prospect Creek. You'll see on the map just I east of it. Yep. Yeah. So we fly 20 minutes to Prospect Creek, load it up in the 206 or the Beaver and bring it here. Wow. And all that, I mean, we got lettuce and cheese and whatever. Uh, you'll meet Judy in a second. Yeah, talk to her up here. Yeah. I mean, we try to bring our own stuff, but there's everything that you might, might need. Yeah. So, that's awesome. I don't know. In the freaking middle of nowhere, and there's stuff here. And it all revolves around the airport. And the people are cool, and you can get drinks any time of night on an IOU. Nice. Cool little bird. Got an O200 in it. And so, it was a fairly local plane, too, to fly. So I get the CFI training that I want uh, flight time for free. So is this our drinking water? This is your drinking water, your cooking water. I mean, you can cook with the water out of the sink. Um, I just wouldn't wash any white clothes with it. I will say this is not my best camera work because my top priority was to live in these moments here and not just live it through the viewfinder of a camera this time. Chris and I weren't really mentally prepared for how remote this place really is, and it's incredibly interesting to see how they do even simple things that we take for granted in normal life, like getting the groceries there. Rob and his wife treated us to dinner at their place, and then we all hopped in the truck so they could show us around. The mosquitoes out here in Bettles, Alaska are pretty bad, but I'm wearing a lot of repellent and I've got the head net on here with the hood and a hat. They're, gonna, they're like all over the camera and the mic right now. But the lighting is gorgeous. It's absolutely still out here. We are at 12.05 a.m. 
and there's the sun right back there. It's just incredible. Above the Arctic Circle, we're about 35 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Absolutely beautiful. The old Bettles Lodge, old Sourdough Lodge, and the old Sourdough Outfitters is here, which is all has to do with the Bettles Lodge. I don't know exactly how all that fits okay. together. Um, most of those are just abandoned buildings now. Skid Row is where a lot of the PRA Skid guys Row. stay. Wouldn't so, be Alaska without a junkyard. Oh, yeah. um, so all the power in Evansville and Bettles is all run off of generators that run 24 hours a day. Wow. So there's a business called uh, at and Alaska Power and Telephone. Uh, and we'll run past there. Raquel, one of my friends, is... So believe it or not, you know, we are a city, therefore there is a post office. Oh my gosh, look at that post office. Yep, <laughs> it's open five days a week. Um, the mail comes in on the Wright's flight, the Wright's charter flight, gets given to Eric Fox of the lodge. He brings it over here, she checks it in, and then it's available for people to get. So you can actually know that your mail's here before your mail actually gets to you. <laughs> uh, no delivery or nothing, you just have to go to the post office and get it. Now we're in Evansville. We just passed Hazel's place. Uh, one of the elders lives there. Uh, they have a little clinic, which is this little blue building right here. There's oh, that's one where, person. Uh, BJ that's works? where BJ works. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, showers are like two dollars and fifty cents a shower or something. If you want to grab a shower from City of Evansville. Oh yeah, it is still still over here tonight. Oh, there's loons. <laughs> One, two, three. That's cool. That's way cool. I don't know what they are. Almost 1 a.m. down and saw like 80 on my leg. Yeah. And then it's kind of a problem after that. Jeez, dude. What do you think? I'm happy. I don't care. All right, it's 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> Gosh. It's and not, it's not getting darker than this, this is it. This is about it. That's about as dark as it's gonna get up here in the Arctic Circle. I think he said we're about 35 miles north yeah, of did. the Arctic Circle in Bettles, Alaska. We got the grand tour from Rob and his, and his wife. That's just awesome. This is, it's so fascinating seeing how like a little village like this operates exists how it exists people are still like pioneers here like natives still live here yeah and the, yeah it's just it's it's crazy so anyways uh yeah this what, is alaska it's 1 30 in the morning and that's as dark as it's gonna get we are uh let's see june 27th so we're six days after summer solstice so we've already had the longest day of the year but this, this is as dark as it's gonna get. The, the sun just barely went behind the mountains back there. And then here in a little while, it's gonna come, be coming back up over the mountains, sliding that way. It's crazy. And here's our little cabin, our little humble cabin here and, now. And here's our cabin. 
Good times. Crazy. Crazy. I don't, I don't know what to think. I'm I, kind of at a loss for words. Me too, but I'm glad we came here. I, at first I was like, you know, there's not going to be anything in Bettles. I know. We're going to stay at this cabin, maybe find some food if they Super have... long way, If yeah. people in this village eat or something, <laughs> and, then, and then we're going to head back. I but, even asked the lady that uh, rents this out, I asked her if it has electricity. <laughs> But I mean, they have some amenities here. So they do, yeah. But but Evansville and Bettles both run on a, a 24-hour generator, right? Yeah, that's what she. That's yeah, just crazy. What Rob said. Anyways, mosquitoes are starting to eat us up. Time to go inside. So, uh, anyways, I'm blown away. <laughs> so is he. Yep. Too cool. This place is incredible. It's simple and it's an entirely different way of life than you'll find everywhere else. This is just one of the many villages like it in the huge state of Alaska, but places like this hold a deeper meaning when you experience being here for the first time. Everything has to get flown in. The food, mail, supplies, fuel, airplane and car parts, everything. There's no road access and that changes everything. Now, if you consider a place like Anchorage, it's a big booming city. It's not far removed from the situation at Bettles. Everything is just taken care of for you. You don't have to think about where the food is coming from or how it's going to get there or how are you going to get a part for your car. I may not be making much sense because what we were thinking while in Bettles is hard to articulate, but the bottom line is this type of experience really makes you appreciate how easy modern life is. And we wouldn't have been able to come visit Rob and see this awesome place without general aviation. In part 12, we depart Bettles back to Lake Hood so I can catch my flight back to Texas after two and a half weeks in the 49th state. After crawling our way through some worsening weather and having to make a U-turn because of it, we finally get back to Lake Hood in Anchorage, Alaska, and we close out this Alaska series. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss part 12. If you like this video, then be sure to give it a like and share. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can head over to aviation101.com store and shop merch and gear there. Until next time, I want you to stay happy, healthy, current, and proficient, and we will see you in part 12, the series finale. Fly safe.